Hi everyone, it's Tammy, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I first started. I knew I wanted to work with these Distress Oxide inks because I think they're really fun. And I'm thinking I want to make a Christmas card because I still have a couple to make. And I have this Santa sleigh set from last year that I just love. And I also have some really pretty glitter that is super fine. This is saffron. Um, I have lots of different colors. Here's a beautiful copper. Uh, let's see. What's this color? Champagne gold. Oh, that's lovely. I might go with that one, but we'll see what it looks like after I've played a little bit. So I just thought I'd bring you guys along. Um, I'll do a little bit of my thought process, a little bit of my plan, just so you guys can see what I'm doing. I know that some of you guys have asked for that and you'd like to see more techniques and more different things. So I'm going to do two different cards, probably in the same way. So I don't know what color background I'm going to have yet, but these are cut at four by five and a quarter. So they're ready to fit on whatever I put underneath them, be it red or green or white or whatever. So I'm going to start with this fired brick and this is the Distress Oxide ink. And I just haven't played with it enough. So I'm working on that. And I'm kind of thinking I'm going to do like a red and a green blend. So these inks are supposed to be really, really great for blending. So we shall see how I can do this. I mean, I'm sure they are really great for blending. That doesn't mean that I'm really great at blending. But I have even heard that like if you get a really hard line, well, even kind of like that one, that you can work that out. I know with the other Distress inks, it was really hard to try to get some blends out. Like if you did this with the other one, oh, you would be stuck with like a circle right there. So let's see if I can blend that out. Let's just check it out. So literally, I am just playing right now. I haven't played enough with these. And I can still see that circle, so it's not totally blended out, but it's a lot better than it was. Oh goodness, yeah, that works out well. I have a loose hair right here that is bugging me. I can like see it out of the corner of my eye. Okay. So that does work. I mean, you can totally blend on it. And something that's a little bit different from the other inks, the other Distress inks, I think, and I'm going to play and we're going to try it together, I can take another color and put it right over this color. So we're going to try that with the green just to see what we can see. And I'm working on a craft mat right now. It's, it's made for crafting, which is really pretty cool. see about just putting this color right over the top let's see what happens I don't know oh my goodness holy cow it really does just go right over it so I can put a color on a color oh my gosh I am liking that you know what I'm gonna try how does it look on black? Let's do five and a quarter. I'm sorry, I'm trying to cut this by four. That's not right. <laughs> That's what I get in it. I cannot believe that, how it like just coats it. So let's see what it does on this black. Oh my goodness. You can totally see the color. That is amazing. I know I have two of these. One of them is a rectangle, but I don't think it would matter.
might be a little harder to get under control, but. That's pretty amazing, guys. I don't know if you've ever played with other Distress ink, but there's no way it would show up on the black. Unless you can totally see. Wow. Okay, well, I'm going to finish working on this. I don't know yet what I'm trying to do. I was kind of thinking stripes, but I don't know that I want stripes. Or I might just lightly blend this over. Maybe it could look like a darker red. I don't know. But I'm going to do the same thing to the other side just because otherwise I would probably end up cutting that off and doing something else. And I want to be able to keep it. Even if it is just kind of a subtle little, I don't know, nothing. <laughs> it's a subtle nothing, but it's kind of fun. Okay, that one's kind of fun, and then I'm going to work on this second one. I had an idea just a second ago. Oh yeah, I was going to maybe blend some other colors in. this yellow. Now I don't have any more stick things, so we'll just have to go like this. Okay, let me do red first. This will maybe look like a sunset or a sunrise. Gosh, look how pretty that is if that was a sunrise. Holy cow. This one's called Iced Spruce, and that's a really good name for it because it's green, but it's kind of iced, I guess. Oh my goodness, I love how these work. This yellow is obviously a lighter color than that one, and I can still blend in over it with the yellow, and the yellow looks like it's the dominant color, which I think is awesome. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out how to finish it off. I wonder if should I introduce a fourth color, make it look kind of rainbowy. Let's see what we can get. Oh, I touched it. Darn it. That's kind of cool. I don't know if it's a Christmas card.
there, blend my fingerprint right in there. Wow, these are really cool, guys. I kind of like how this looks just like that, but I'm not sure what I will put on it. Um, I don't know. Let's play, and maybe I'll maybe I'll put a tree on it or something. Maybe I'll try to make it Christmassy. Not every Christmas card has to be red and green, right? Okay, so this one is the iced spruce one. This one is the fossilized amber. Faded jeans. Fired brick. Okay. Now I think I'm going to clean up my craft mat just a little bit. Get ink everywhere. Okay, that's really fun. What I do with them? Okay, there. Kind of like that this way. And this one, I don't know, maybe that way. So let's see. If I had these, and if I put Santa's sleigh on one. With a reindeer. I don't know if this will fit, so we'll have to see. That's kind of cool. up a little bit. That's a nice feeling. Okay, I think if I just use some Versamark. I'm gonna try two different techniques. Okay, so this one is gonna be Versamark, and I'm gonna put some embossing powder on it. Oh, whoops, I brought that along with me. Didn't mean to. Okay, so if he's here, and this guy will be right up next to him like that. Push it down really well. Alright. And I will clean those in a bit. And I'm going to use my block to do the deer in the same fashion. And I'm going to put him right here. or clean him up in a little minute. And then with this one, I don't 
don't know yet. I'm going to put that and present. And let's go ahead and put another present. So we'll see how this turns out. Pick up that. I'm going to use my Versamark. I don't know if that's even straight. I wasn't paying attention to that. I was just trying to get it between the presents. Er, it might be a little crooked. My tree. It's fallen over. Here's a long present. Everybody's wondering what's inside. A square present, which is, could also be a window. And I can barely see, so it looks like I'm pretty good at where they're placed. And then I'm also going to need a bow or two. Now that I am sufficiently full over there in the cleaning zone, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. And for this card, I'm going to use heat and stick powder. This is from Stampin' Up! And as you guys know, I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I haven't really used this much, if at all. I'm honestly not even sure if I've used it at all yet. So I'm kind of excited to try it. It's kind of stuck in here a little bit. And it's kind of like embossing powder. there's a difference and the difference is is that when you heat it it gets tacky so instead of having to use embossing powder I could use glitter so that's what I'm gonna do with this one and it does seem to have stuck a little bit to the Tim Holtz distress ink so I'm gonna wipe that stuff off of where I don't want it. And to be frank, I'm not really being super careful. If this doesn't turn out, then that's okay. I'm just trying to see what things I can do. I'm not sure if I'm even crazy about this background yet, but I'll probably send it to someone. There's a little area here now that I'm not sure if I didn't get or if it if it didn't get um, the powder. All right, we'll just 
deal with that. That's fine. And so now I'm going to put this back in my container. Now you should probably not use the same page, the same catch-all for the Versamark one with embossing powder because when I pour it back in I might get some of that in the embossing powder so you want to be careful of that so if I were you I probably wouldn't do what I'm about to do <laughs> so this is the copper embossing powder and so when this gets heated up this is done it will melt to the page and it will look really cool and you don't have to do anything else to it See how some of it sticks to the sides? It doesn't look bad though. I mean, it's crazy. I don't know where or how it gets its idea of sticking because it doesn't stick a lot. Just a little bit. I think I just stuck my hand in that one and made it. I'm going to call that good, even though I'm sure that some embossing powder could still come off. I'm not done with this because I'm going to use it for some glitter, so I'll just put it up there. But I am going to close my embossing powder, and I'm going to turn on my heat gun. And I do love watching me do watching embossing. I just love this. So hopefully you guys can see what it's doing, but it will melt this and it will make it really cool. See how it's starting on his feet. Oh, it's so neat. Heat embossing is probably my favorite technique. Cazzaroni. Mom is making a card. It's like magic. So there is embossing. Now I'm going to heat this up and let's see what this does. Ooh, it just goes clear when it's heated. Ooh, very cool. But I'm not done with that one. So this one should be tacky. Oh, and it certainly is. So heat and stick. So you heat it up and it gets tacky. I'm going to use a copper because I have copper in this too. So let's just use copper on both of them, then we can see the difference between copper glitter and copper embossing, um, embossing powder. Oh, I love glitter. And this is the Elizabeth, oh, what's it called? Elizabeth Craft Designs, that is who this glitter is made by. It's microfine. She has amazing colors. She does some amazing work. If you watch her stuff on YouTube, she'll show you how she does it. I don't do it justice. I don't play with it enough. So I thought I'd play a little bit today. So that's why I'm doing this. And I thought I'd take you guys along. Ooh, now that does totally stick to his um, stuff, but since this isn't, I'm gonna try something. Since this is not embossing powder, so this won't, the, the glitter won't change its 
glitz. It's still just glitter. It won't melt or anything under the heat gun. I'm going to see if when I heat it and get it to stick firmly to the heat and stick, if then I can just brush the rest of that glitter away without having to like brush it with this, if that makes sense. Let me just do it and we'll see. So now it, it, I know the instructions are to heat this again. And this is supposed to make it permanent. I don't really see any changes, so I'm not sure if, I, I mean, I don't know how you know it's stuck and not gonna move. I'm not exactly sure yet. Oh, but it feels good. Okay, so now I've heated that. And let me see what happens if I just take my brush and brush over. <gasps> This is so cool. Okay, watch this, guys. Can you guys see that? I'm brushing off the excess glitter. Well, trying to. It's kind of still wet, so I'm getting some still stuck in my brush and on here. I'm brushing pretty hard, too, and this is not moving off of the image. Oh, that is so cool. So this is the heat and stick by Stampin' Up. I don't know who else has it. I just know I was looking in the catalog and I just wanted to buy some of the things that I haven't purchased before and I hadn't maybe even seen before. I think I've seen the heat and stick, but I've never really been sure how to use it. I'm still obviously learning. I don't know. I mean, I don't know everything, that's for sure. I mean, I know I love to craft. I know I love... To stamp, I know I love stamping up products, but I know I love lots of other products, including including this amazing glitter, micro fine glitter. It is beautiful. This would be really pretty in a shaker card too. I'm just trying to save as much of it as I can. Now, of course, it's all over my workspace because that's what happens when you use glitter. And frankly, I don't even usually care. I'm fine with it because I love some glitter. I remember one time, excuse me, Katie and I were at the mall. I think the glitter on the outside actually kind of adds to it, makes it look kind of pretty because there's glitter all over the card. Hopefully you can see that. We were at the mall one day and <laughs> there was a pink pair of high top like Converse. They weren't real Converse All-Stars, but they were like fake All-Stars, um, um, all whatever I'm trying to say. And they were pink and glittery and they were so cute. And um, I need a drink of my tea. Katie and I were looking at them and I said, "Ooh, Kate, these are so pretty. And then my friend Linda came over and she said, um, that's a lot of glitter and Katie said you can never have too much glitter and I thought that is my daughter that is so my daughter and now she's totally not into glitter or glitz or any of that but she likes she appreciates it but she's not like she used to be she used to be all glittery and glitzy so I think both of those turned out really cute I am excited about using them for cards but you can totally see the difference between glitter I mean, it's like really stuck on there with that heat and heat and stick. I'm loving it. Okay, so you can see the to the difference between glitter and embossing powder. The embossing powder is more like foil, and the glitter is more like glitter. So um, they're both shiny, but this one is glittery, whereas this one is not. But they're both beautiful, and just different techniques giving you a different look. Now I'm going to complete these cards and I think I'm going to use maybe a, maybe I'll use like a old olive colored green or something. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And sometimes I think that's just what I miss. Just sitting down and playing. 
and I'm going to try to do more of that in the next year, but, um, you know, sometimes it's a pain, honestly, because you have to get out new stuff and try new stuff and, and, you know, you're, it's not, you're not something you're used to. And it takes a little bit of time. Ooh, I like that one. And that's fine too. So we'll just go with that. All right. So I'm going to take this down, put this over here. Oh, I have a wax melting and it smells so good. And let's see, I'm going to cut this at five and a half. Five and a half, and then I'm going to score it at four and a quarter this way. Oh my goodness, that's three and three quarters. Four and a quarter. I could tell just by how much was sticking out over here. Oh well, I'll just make it work. And this one is four and a quarter. Measure twice, score once. <laughs> Ugh. What do I always say? Crafting in real life. All right. Let's put some adhesive on these bad boys. I don't even know if I need to put anything else on them. I'm gonna put this one right here where I messed up. You really can't even tell. So there's that. Oops, <laughs> get my rag. I don't need that, do I? That'll make the card pretty. Ah. And this one. And I'll probably put a piece of, well, I have some Whisper right, White right here. No, I don't. Some uh, vanilla, very vanilla. Four by five and a quarter. Did I do five and a half? Yes. Four. Five and a quarter. hands are so dry. They're starting to hurt. I even peeled some skin. That's nasty to talk about off of my thumb. Oh, but look. Wah. And I use it all the time, so it makes it even more hurty. <sighs> complaints, complaints, complaints. Not really. It's just the weather. And thank goodness that's the only ailment I have to worry about right now. And there we go. Thanks, guys. I think they're cute. I might put, like, Merry Christmas or something right here. Let's see. What do these sentiments say? Merry Christmas wishes. Um, my block. I think I'll just do that in just regular old basic ink. Regular ink? Ah, that's a travesty. Merry Christmas wishes. Merry Christmas wishes. I'll put it over here. So I don't have to worry about trying to be center. All right, there we go. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.